Hey there, comic book friends and fiends. It's Rob here in front of the Great Wall of Comics. It's Monday. We've got a stack of boxes. That means it's time for mail call. So we're going to dig into this stack here of mail call. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, we got some stuff from eBay. We got some stuff from IG. We got some AOKs. So let's just get right into it, I say. And let's start with the AOKs. Uh, and then we'll work our way through. Now, uh, I got to love this right here. The uh, main man himself, DJ Lynx. Look at this. The man's got his own <laughs> freaking bags. I say there's nothing like marketing. But that man has taken it to another level. Congratulations to you, Mr. DJ Lynx. Um, so he sent this over. Uh, I'm sending a pack. or So I guess I'm now gathering stuff that's being sent over to Australia for Mad Spidey. Uh, because he won something off of some channel. Couldn't uh, get those... Um, Anyways, they wouldn't ship to Australia, so he had it shipped to me, uh, so I shipped to him, and the community sending some stuff out. So, uh, DJ Lynx sent over uh, something for me to close the box. The Spidey! I can't do it. I just really can't. Anyways, so, something going over to Mad Spidey, and he threw in uh, something for myself. Uh, it looks like here, I got myself a t-shirt, a double XL, uh, because... Oh, yeah, baby. I'm a double XL. Um, so this is the DJ Lynx. Oops. Lynx Squad in a black, which is great. I have a white one. Um, love to get the black one. Black one's a better color for me. Not only is it slimming, but Fat Man and food ends up with spills. And white shirts... That's no bueno. Anyway, so very cool. Thank you, Mr. DJ. I will put that into my t-shirt rotation and try to make sure I even wear it on camera from time to time. I do a not very good job of rotating my community member shirts um, on camera, and I apologize for that. I will have to endeavor to get better. All right, let me put this out of the way. All right, next up, I have, if I can find my knife, there it is, an A-OK -okay here from... Uh, Mr. Tyler Glass. Um, and if it's Pokemon, I'm going to frickin' throw this out the goddamn window. Uh, but, and honestly, I, I have a suspicion of what it is, or I know what it's supposed to be, because he happened to be at his new shop, which is a really cool comic book shop, like Arcade, the letter R, and Cade Comics. Um... And it's like an old firehouse or something. This looks really cool. Uh, and he said he was... This knife... I don't know. won't pierce this tape. So we'll go to the backup knife. Anyways, he's, he, was, he was out hunting. And uh, he pinged me. And sent me a picture of a Mystery in Space book. And asked if I needed it. Um, and I said, well, I don't have it in my PC. And so uh, I th believe that's what this is. Um, whether or not he did anything else, I don't <sighs> Frickin' stack of Pokemon cards. Alright. Let's see what this man wrote here. I know how much you love us at WAC Comics, so I wanted to send you something special a com and a comic book. Here are some cards to put in some of the backs of the giveaway books for Slab Hub as well. Yours truly, Daddy Tie Tie. All right, let's uh, move that piece of cardboard out of the way. Let's get to the important thing first, in my opinion, and that is this Mystery in Space book. This is a nice, older, early Adam Strange. Actually, is there two books in here? Oh, no. Oh, God, that... 
This guy. This guy right here, I tell you. I'm doomed forever to walk the earth like David Banner uh, with this curse around my neck. Hey, yes, I said David Banner, like the TV show. All right, well, anyway, so we got Mystery in Space, uh, issue number 56. So this is an early Mystery in Space, uh, very early in the run where Adam Strange has taken over the title. Uh, this book has some uh, creases and everything, but it doesn't matter. Uh, on, these bo on these books right now, I'm just... I'm happy to pick these up and add them to my run, uh, Phil, as I work out that run. So, cool. Thank you very much for this comic book, Tyler. I shouldn't even dignify opening these cards on camera. <laughs> So I have no idea what any of this stuff does, any of this is at all. Uh, I'm assuming since he's getting rid of them, they're not worth a whole ton. But wait, we'll throw them in the... Sure, I'll throw them into a bunch of cards and get rid of these damn things. I can't be accused of having a flipping collection of Pokemon cards. And at this point, it's goddamn like a goddamn collection of these damn things. All right, let's get back to some comics. All right, um, this should be a uh, from the Comic Mint. Uh, they had a special going on. And uh, so Amazing Spider-Man number one came out. And uh, there was a, you know, I guess because... These online shops, where they really want to make their money is on a lot of these um, uh, incentive variants and whatnot, and exclusives. Well, to get those incentives, you have to have, sell a certain number of regular books. So to help do that, they basically will start putting books together um, at a discount. So they clear... The, you know they'll make a little bit of profit off the regular books, but they'll get their book count, their order count up, and they can then get more incentives, which they can sell at a real profit. So, anyways, um, I decided they ended up having uh, some five packs. So, anyways, first of all, uh, here I get this little box with magic, and so what was it? They were Okay, so you got a five pack. You could basically pick one of the, um, the there was a certain one, Spider Man issue number one. They had five packs for seventeen dollars. So you were basically then paying a little bit more than three dollars a book, three fifty a book. So I said, sure. Let me get some, because I wouldn't mind necessarily these covers. Uh, I didn't want to pay full boogie, full tilt boogie price for one. Um, so I go through, I can figure with, if I get five of each, I'll definitely have at least one nine eight candidate for each cover. And I can then take the rest of them and throw them in the giveaway box. So we got five of the Gleason variant book cover for $17 and we got five of the Scotty Young variant for $17 so I definitely see holy cow there is a variation on these for sure because like I can see like this one, this is nice and clean and black background over here. Whereas this one has a white spot right there. Alright, it's not there. So, yeah, there's definitely a, 
some variation on these with this paper. These bags are pretty bad too. I have to get them out of these, redo them all. But anyways, the point was I can cherry pick these and get myself one or two for my PC. Uh, number ones, and the rest of them are going to go in the Slab Hub giveaway. So, yeah, if you didn't get the Scotty Young or the S Gleason cover, and you want one, I guess you'll just have to watch uh, Slab Hub. Okay, let's get into some cool eBay stuff. Um, so, the other day on Slab Hub, our man, Man Cave Comics, was on. And... That son of a gun came on and showed off a whole bunch of old uh, Turok Son of Stone and um, Magnus Robot Fighter. And I hadn't really paid attention to the old Magnus Robot Fighters, but when he started showing them off, I was like, damn it, some of those are way, way my jam. And sure enough, that caused me to go on to the old interwebs and see if I couldn't track down a couple issues at a fair price. Uh, because all of a sudden, there was a bunch of people who had watched Slab Hub that were also going off and checking out uh, some Magnus Robot Fighters and some uh, Turok Cine Stone covers. So, it wasn't like I was the only one all of a sudden. Uh, let's see, just kind of trying to remove it from the this person taped it down to the board, which is good. Better than the, some of the last eBay stuff I got. Alright. So, this one is... Uh, I don't even know what number it is, because I don't can't read the gold key numbering just yet. But hey, here we go. There's some robot fighter beating up on some robots, and the robots are farting green gas, I guess. Nice. I do love the very Zap Brannigan outfit. I mean, I think we know where uh, they got their inspiration for Zap Brannigan. White boots, red tunic with a, you know, kilt type outfit. That is 100%. Uh, the only thing you need is some white gloves and that's 100% Zap Brannigan. Kef and form the men. I've made it with a woman this time. Anyways, all right. So and then this should be another Magnus robot fighter. I'm concerned about this one a little bit only because it's taped down so much that the Gemini is squished. Um, I'm hoping that that's okay. Some bubble wrap in here. Don't see any damage so much. I mean, squished flat isn't a big deal, but sometimes it compromises the corners. And then when the corners get compromised, when it gets banged around, next thing you know, no good bueno. So this one, they uh, bagged it, they double boarded it, or double bagged and double boarded it, rather. That's kind of nice. This is a beaut. Some a little color rub down there, but otherwise, this is a pretty nice book. A lot of pressable defects, but I pff, look at that giant flipping robot fighting time. Who couldn't love this? This is this one is going off to get pressed and going up on the wall eventually because I love giant flipping robots. Damn, that is a beautiful cover cars. Look, they got flying space cars that are ra shooting lasers at other fighting robots. It's like the, deta the detail in here. It's really, really good. Man. I think I remember seeing this thing wraps around. No. This one does not. All right, cool. So, Magnus Robot Fighter, 4000 AD. All right, last box up. So, this one is an interesting story. So, um, I won't get into all the details because I don't want um, 
the guy who's who sold this to me all the details coming out necessarily for his benefit. But suffice it to say, uh, he uh, this is from Silver Age, uh, Silver Age Comics. Uh, he sells on on um, Instagram, uh, has claim sales like every Friday night, uh, and I like to find. Um, take a look at his books every once in a while. There's something there I'm really kind of keen into. And uh, when scrolling through the first, first one, it jumped out of my mind um, because we recently had Mike Becker or Beckerman on the show and he had talked about his love of speedball and everything. And there it was. There was Amazing Spider Man uh, an Annual with the first appearance of Speedball. And I said, hey, I should pick that up. It was a pretty darn good, very fine condition book. It was, he was asking $18 for it. So I go ahead and add that to my collection. If for no other reason, just to tell Mike Becker, buddy, you inspired me and I got some speedball. You inspired me to go out and get some speedball. Oh, whatever that means. All right. So then the next book. Wow. So let me kind of just go in. I'm going to say, so this book was uh, part of a deal, essentially, that I'm working in for the final book I'll show. So uh, that's just this X-Men, Uncanny X-Men 197. It's a cool Doom cover. I thought it was kind of cool. He had like four or five of them. And they were, you know, I think he was asking like 10 bucks a pop for them or something. Uh, and they're in really good condition. This is a uh, John Romita Jr. cover. Um, so I'm like, oh, hey, why don't you throw one of those in for two bucks? In this deal so he said okay so here we are at 20 bucks for these two the last book now he had posted this up and this is where i'm going to get a little vague and i apologize but this book he posted up um at a price uh that kind of shocked me at first and i looked and i even got to a point where i i was interested in the book because it's one i need for my for my collection and it was though the price I went and double checked. I'm like, oh, wow, that is super high for the grade he's saying it is. Um, and so I messaged him. I said, hey, is that a typo or is that really the price that you were asking? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's a consignment book, um, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, were you interested? I said, well, I was interested, but not anywhere near that price. It's way too high. Um, and I gave him the evidence that I had that, you know, the back recent sales history, the 90 day average, etc., for the approximate grade to show him that it was more than he was asking almost triple what the going rate was for the book. And he goes, Oh, thanks for bringing my attention. He marks down the book, uh, to about double what it sells for. And then he says, are you, are you interested? And I'm like, well, I'm not interested in that price. I'm not exactly as fluid. That price is still high, as I said, et cetera. So I know it's a consignment book. I don't want to even insult you trying to make an offer because, you know, I know you're limited. And he's, no, no, the consignment guy, he's cool with a bunch of stuff. He's got, I got a lot of leeway, whatever else. So I finally tell him, said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. If I'm in it, I'm in it at this price. And he goes... Well, I can't quite do that. Uh, but he said, would you do this price? And, and I, and it was about, we were about 50 bucks apart at that point. And I was like, I'm factoring in. Okay, well, then he goes, I'll throw in free shipping. Okay, so that takes now, because I already have, I already previously had committed to the Speedball book. So I was paying $18 for this, plus I was paying shipping. Which, so taking the shipping off, because this will get included, now all of a sudden that takes $9 away. So that, so that my cost on this was really going to be about 36 bucks, right? So now it's back down to 18 I'm all okay, so that's part of that. Um, I'm not paying tax for this stuff because it is on IG and everything else. And so finally I kind of said, you know what? I do want that book. He sent me some higher, he sent me some better pictures. I felt that maybe he was being conservative on his grading. And so I said, I'll take a chance. I'll take it. Um, but if you'll throw in one of these for two bucks to make it a round number. And he said, okay, done. So with that, um, without telling you guys the final price, sorry and everything, because otherwise you can back figure it all out. But uh, at the end of the day, for a fair price, I picked up Amazing Spider-Man issue number eight. 
So this is the last of the cheap <laughs> or inexpensive, I should say. I shouldn't say cheap because these book, this book's still not cheap. Uh, but as far as the uh, other sub 10 ASMs go, um, I have, you know, seven, now eight. Um, I have issue 10, but nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, and nine uh, are some, start to get to be some pretty pricey books to say the least. Um, so anyways, I picked this up. This knocks me down to, I think, 11 books that I need to complete my Amazing Spider-Man below 100, the first 100 issues run. Um, and only like two of those books are above issue 30 or issue above issue 20. So the majority of them are in the super expensive realm and the, that one, th that one, two, three, four, five, six, and nine, that's seven of the 12 books right there. So you can figure that out. Um, it's going to be pretty slow and low between my getting new copies of these sub ASM 100s, but there you go. We pick up a sub ASM 100. We uh, pick ourselves up some speedball. Who cares about the doom? Uh, some Magnus robot fighter. Some more ASM ones. Uh, thanks to Tyler, we got ourselves a mystery in space, and we got ourselves some Squirtle, I guess. More importantly, thanks to Mr. DJ Lynx for the cool shirt, uh, because that I can use. Until next time, guys, click what you want. Don't listen to me, though, because I'm just a fat man with a fat stack of comics and a fat opinion. Thanks for watching.